Hello, and welcome to 26, my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, I'll be talking about snapping and removing doubles. Now, a few videos ago in this series, I made a video on joining, merging, and filling holes in meshes. After I posted that video, a few of my viewers quite rightly pointed out that I missed the opportunity to talk about snapping, which would have been the easiest way, or the easiest tool, or best tool, to use to fill the hole that I created in the mesh. So I'll be talking about snapping in this video, as well as how to remove doubles, which means if you ever have two vertices in the exact same spot, you'll know what a mess that can create. It's a very hard problem to diagnose, so I'll talk about how to diagnose that and solve that problem in this video. To get started, the easiest way to use the snapping tool is if you grab an object in your scene, in my case my default cube, and you hold the control key down, when you move the object you'll see it snaps to a grid. It's not just moving smoothly anymore, it's snapping to a grid. I'm going to go ahead and let go of control and right click uh, to let go of the cube. The grid right now that this cube is moving to or snapping to is basically this ground grid. This ground grid is made of squares that are one blender unit by one blender unit. If I switch to my front orthographic view with the 1 and 5 key on my numpad, you'll see now that my screen is full of these squares or a grid of one blender unit by one blender unit. And so if I press G and again hold control down on my keyboard to activate snapping, the cube will snap to this grid. You can't move it in between without letting go of the control key. If I move my cube a little bit though, and I press G and hold control, it won't snap to that grid, it'll snap to increments that are the same size, but it'll be a little bit off, so just watch out there. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. What's happening here is that when you hold control, of course, it's snapping to the grid, but it's snapping to the increment that you can see on the screen, which just happens to be increments of one blender unit. If I zoom in more, you'll start to see, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this on this video, you'll be able to see it in your own in Blender interface though, the grid is now made up of a much smaller or larger grid of smaller increments, which are one tenth of one blender unit. So now when I press G and hold control down, it's not snapping to the larger unit, it's snapping, and you'll see that as I move this cube around, it's snapping to increments that are much smaller. It's snapping to that grid instead. So it's dependent on how zoomed in you are on your screen. This is only one tiny part of snapping though. You can also snap parts of your element or the object that you have selected to other parts of other objects. We'll quickly go over what that looks like in object mode. What I'll do here is I'm gonna add a second cube and I'll put it over here. And I'm gonna add with shift A, I'll add a monkey head as well. If I grab this cube with the G key, I can snap it to the other objects. And how I do that is I can activate my snapping down here by clicking on the um, little magnet button. I'm just going to make sure that you can see that on the screen, so I'll divide this window in two. There it is. I'll click it. By default, the object or element that your grabbed object snaps to is increments. That means the increments that you can see on your screen. If you change this though, you can select volumes, faces, edges, or vertices. In this case, I'm going to select volumes, and I'll press G, and notice how my mouse is not over top of the cube that I'm moving, it's offset from it. If I hover my mouse cursor over the monkey head though, the cube snaps to it. Notice how if I press G again and move my mouse over the cube, it snaps to that as well. You can play around with these other settings, but what's happening here is if I press G and move a mouse over the monkey head, it's snapping the closest vertice that's closest to the monkey to the monkey head. And that's because I had this closest option set. If I choose center instead and I press G again, it's going to snap the center of the object I have selected to that monkey head. So basically, this menu selects what you're snapping to, and this menu selects what part of the object that you're moving is snapping to the target. So I'll let you play around with that a little bit. Let's go ahead and undo a few of these moves to put my cube back where it started, and I'll delete my other cube and monkey head. The more powerful area where you can use snapping though is in edit mode. So with the cube selected, I'll press tab to go into edit mode, and I'm going to press W and subdivide up uh, this cube. In fact, I'll make uh, five cuts. And just like in my other video where I talked about joining, merging, and filling holes, I'm going to go ahead and delete some of the faces using my C select tool. If you press C on your keyboard, you can then paint a selection. Unfortunately, using this tool, you can't change your view. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just select some of these uh, 
faces. And if you middle mouse button like you're orbiting, it'll deselect what you have selected. So I'll select that. Good enough for me. Let's press Enter to exit circle select mode. And then I'll press X and delete these faces. How I filled this hole, or a very similar hole in my previous video on joining, merging, and filling rather, is I took some edges, in other words, I could take these edges and extrude them out and merge the vertices on this corner and this corner together. And then what I'd have to do is I'd have to look at the coordinate of this edge of vertices and match this one up with it. Let's go ahead and just quickly remind you what that looks like. If I select these two edges, press E and then X to extrude it out only on the X axis. I can then click right there. I'll select this vertice. I'll zoom in a little bit before that though. And I'll select this vertice and press W and select merge and at last because I'm going to merge to the location of the last one that I selected. I'll do the same thing here. This one and then this one. W merge and then at last because I selected this one last. How do you fix this one though? Well as I just mentioned I have to go up to my properties panel which is this little plus or the N key and look at the location uh, on the Y axis or the X axis rather of this vertice which in my case is 0 0.2 which means that I have to fix this one by selecting it and retyping in 0 0.2 on that X axis and now it's in the exact right location. I can confirm that by looking at the coordinates of this, these ones as well. On the Y axis it's negative 0.2. Same thing right here. That one's all lined up. That's a very tedious process though. Snapping would make this so much easier. I'm going to go ahead and select um, edges or go to edge select mode. Instead of snapping to volumes this time, I'm going to snap to vertices. What this allows me to do is if I select some edges that I want to extrude out, I'll tap E to extrude them. What I can now do is, if I'm in vertice snap mode, if I have extruded edges, what I can do is mouse over or put my mouse cursor over a vertice and it'll snap the closest vertice in my selection to that vertice. So I, you see I can mouse over anything and it'll snap the closest vertice in my selection to that vertice that I'm hovering over, but in this case of course I'll snap to that one and the rest of them will line up. So whatever the vertice is that's in your selection is closest to the vertice you mouse over, it'll snap there and it'll maintain its pos or form as you've grabbed it. What I'll do now is select these edges and I'm going to extrude them out again so I'll press E and then I'll just hover over this vertice and then click. But we have a problem here. Just because I've moved or snapped this vertice out to this, or this edge selection I have out to this vertice, does not mean that I've welded anything together. In fact, if I start searching through my vertices, you'll see that I have two vertices in the same spot sometimes. I'll snap that one back. I believe I have that same problem in a few other spots. How do I solve this? Well, that's where the remove doubles tool comes in. If I press A a few times to select all the vertices in my scene, and then I press Control V to bring up my vertices menu. I can then select Remove Doubles. And what that will do is it'll search through my entire mesh and merge any vertices that are in the exact same spot. So if I click on that, you'll notice up here it removed five vertices, which means that they found five places where there were two vertices and it merged them. There is a faster way of doing it than this though. That was a very fast way, but the proactive way of doing that is to click this button when you're snapping. This button automatically merges vertices that are in the same location preemptively, which means that if I select that and I select now some edges to keep on extruding, so I'm going to select these three and I'll press E and I'll mouse over that vertice right there and I'll click it's automatically welded the two vertices here and the two vertices here together, which means I don't even have that problem from the outset. It does it proactively for me. So it's a good idea to have that selected always when you're snapping in edit mode. Let's go ahead and patch this hole. I'll press E, I'll mouse over the vertice, click, done. I'll select these two, E, done. Select these two, E, and done. That's a very quick introduction to snapping. You can play around with both of these menus and how they work together. Uh, it's a very handy tool, especially if you want to do work um, in a very precise way uh, to create the exact topology of mesh that you want. And that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.